As our transmitter at Home Moss goes into service, television newsreel opens tonight with the story behind its completion. Before himself going north to take charge of the outside broadcast unit in the new region, Derek Barrell Davis visited our research department where the site was originally selected. As soon as I got there, I went to see Mr. Rowden, who carried out the preliminary survey. I expect you will want to know why we put the transmitter here at Hull Moss. You will see from this map that the site is high up on the Pennines uh, between Yorkshire and Lancashire. And on this other map, uh, it's pretty well in the middle of Britain. Yes, in the middle of Britain, but presumably only serving part of it. We have the original transmitter at Alexandra Palace serving the London area and Sutton Coldfield to serve the Midlands. We're now building a further station at Kirkushots for the central Scotland area and another one at Wenvoe for South Wales and part of the west of England. Yes. Uh, well, what area do you expect Home Moss to cover itself? Well, these field contour lines, which are the result of our tests, show that you should get a good picture over Yorkshire and Lancashire and a considerable part of Cheshire. Two years ago, there was nothing but peat and heather up here on the moors of Yorkshire. Lonely streams ran down to the valleys, where the moorland farms sheltered in the side of the mountain. But as our surveyors moved into the site of the new transmitter, there began an invasion of the barren mountaintop marked on maps as Home Moss. Work on the site began in February 1950. First of all, the covering of peat had to be stripped away, and a service road laid across the lonely moor. By the early summer of last year, the foundations for the buildings were laid. Every day, building staff and materials were carried up the mountain roads from Manchester and Huddersfield. Even water had to be brought up by tanker lorry. And the last section of the cable which links the new transmitter with Sutton Coldfield and Alexandra Palace had to be hauled up this road. The cable laying, a post office responsibility, was a major operation in itself. And it was a vital one, for this cable with its 20 amplifying stations is the sole link over which television programmes pass between Birmingham and Home Moss. By the time the cable was laid, the main building was taking shape. Progress was being supervised by our building department's clerk of works. And rapidly through the summer months of 1950, the walls of the transmitter rose out of the ground. In August, the steelwork of the mast was started. It was built mainly in triangular sections and pivoted on a base plate and a two-inch metal ball. Each section was raised by a winch and bolted into position by men who clung precariously to the slender steel frame. As the base was 1,720 feet above sea level and the mast was to be 750 feet high, these men had to work nearly 2,500 feet up by the time they were fixing the aerials. Meanwhile, at a factory in the south of England, the high-power sound and vision transmitters were being made. These transmitters do not look very different from the ones in use at Sutton Coldfield. In fact, the whole layout of Home Moss is similar, though not identical, to the Midland Station. The transmitters, of course, had to be taken to pieces for transit to Home Moss and reassembled there. But before that, everything had to be carefully checked and tested. Winter weather brought work on the mast to a standstill for 22 weeks. But as the equipment for the transmitters began to arrive, and as the brick walls and the roof of the main building had been finished by the autumn, indoor work went on through the winter. But though the site was open to wind and weather, its location had many advantages even in the building stage. For example, stone from a local quarry was put to use to cover all the outside walls of the new station. This Pennine stone does two jobs. It gives the building a second protective skin and it tones it in with the soft colours of the moors. Thanks to the stone quarried here, the face of home moss now bears the mark of local craftsmen.
The site was so exposed that special protection had to be rigged up for men working on the outside stone facing. Yet the people who came to look at Home Moss towards the end of August last year found that the stonework was done and the outside of the station virtually completed. In the heart of the bleak moors, grey and windswept even in summer, there stood a new building, a new shape which is neither house, hall nor factory, but a key point in the spreading world of television. Over the main door there is carved the BBC crest, and above it there soars the mast. The work on the mast and the aerial it supports was also finished by the end of summer, and for the last time the riggers swung down to earth in their flimsy bosun's chair. As the transformers arrived at the site, they were installed in an annex, and the main building too has been busy for months past with the installation and testing of the transmitters. ago, Burrell Davis visited the new transmitter and met Mr. Todd of our planning and installation department and Mr. Buckle, the engineer in charge. Oh, hello. hello. How did you enjoy your trip round the station? Well, I had a grand time, thank you very much. Mm. By gum, isn't it bracing there? Oh, yes, it's windy today. Nice right? warm in the building, though. Yes. Mm. Um, I'm told that in here you've got the, uh, the main works as well, something that controls everything. Yes, right. yes, well, here it is. Now, your job's been the installation here, hasn't it? Yes, that's right. And of course, most of the work's been done by the contractors. They've been very helpful, and what difficulties we have had have been speedily overcome. And now you come in and take over. <laughs> yes. Are you looking forward to it? Yes, very much. Uh, as you see, we've got a very fine building, we've got some wonderful equipment here, and we're going to enjoy it very much. There's one thing that struck me, that you are pretty high up here. What happens if you're snowed up? Well, uh, we are very exposed, as you see, but uh, we've got a very fine building. It's got double walls, double windows. Uh, we've also got sleeping accommodation. And we've got a plentiful supply of uh, emergency rations. Home Moss is proud of its comfortable canteen with its large kitchen. In fact, the whole interior of the station is bright and cheerful. Outside, the building is dwarfed by the mast whose aerials now bring viewers in the north of England their first edition of television newsreel.